Hello and welcome back to Love Your Food. Today we're going to show you this amazing tomato sauce and uh, we're going to take that right through uh, this beautiful pasta bake that you see here. Uh, we're going to start with a couple of cans of diced tomatoes, some, uh, uh, some white onions, a shallot, a couple of cloves of garlic, and a carrot for a little bit of sweetness and uh, just to thicken things a little bit. And we're going to cook all of this in our nice uh, Dutch oven here. Now you can use cast iron for this as well, any pot that... Uh, has a nice good heavy bottle you can use. We're going to be cooking this for a long time though, so you do need to give it uh, uh, a pretty good heavy bottomed pot. And all of this is going to uh, be made into sauce. We uh, are going to cook it for a long time, but uh, we do need to get everything chopped pretty finely. Not uh, super, super fine dice, but we are going to make sure that everything's a pretty good small size. It doesn't have to be uh, particularly even, it doesn't have to be all exactly the same size, but it does all have to be pretty small. So we're going to get that in the pot, uh, just a tiny bit of our favorite high smoke point oil in there. We're using canola right now, but you can use um, grapeseed oil or uh, anything like that. We're going to give our garlic a little chop as well, really thin slices there, uh, as well with our shallot. Nice little thin slices of shallot. And uh, we're going to come back around on this again. And uh, just give it another little chop here. That's all going to go into the pot. Give it a little bit of time to, uh, to sweat a little bit in the oil. So we're going to give it a little stir. Make sure it's all nicely covered with the oil. And a little bit of salt at the beginning here. Make sure everything's good and coated. And then we're going to just cover that uh, for a little while. That's going to be on medium-high heat. Just to get everything sizzling. And while that's going, uh, we're going to start on uh, chopping our onions here. Again, we want to make sure we've got uh, pretty thin slices on the onions. And it's helpful if you cut uh, across the grain instead of with the grain. It just helps it uh, to really melt in the... Uh, melt in the sauce when all is said and done. So here we go, we've got all of our onions chopped here. And all of that uh, is going to go into the pot now. Everything into the pot. We're going to get that, uh, let those onions wilt a little bit. Just make sure we get everything nice and hot. Again, a little bit of salt on the onions. All the veggies need a little bit of salt. Get it all stirred up. Make sure that uh, we've got the onions touching the uh, bottom of the pan there. All of our garlic, shallot, and carrots have all had a little bit of a chance to sweat. So we're going to make sure that they're uh, well blended in there and we've got some good contact of the onions at the bottom and give it a cover. So here we have some oregano, some thyme, and some basil. And once the, uh, the onions have nicely wilted, you don't want a whole lot of caramel on them, but uh, you can see they've, uh, they've wilted nicely in there. We're just going to dump all of our spices in there. This is going to be a really nice rich flavor in there. And our tomatoes are going to be going at the same time. So let's get those in there too. Now we're just going to use two cans of the uh, already diced tomatoes. Makes it a little bit easier later on. You get the right, uh, it has the right balance of uh, liquid and solid for us. And then we're just going to make sure we get all of the tomato out of those cans. We're just going to give a little splash of vermouth in there. Go from one can to the other. A little swish. Get all that tomato juice out of there. And a little vermouth for seasoning as well. Now we're going to just leave this cook for a little while. Once it's all well combined, get those onions and carrots, garlic, and shallots mixed in with the tomatoes. We're going to cover this again and we're going to let it cook for a few hours. Oh, 
on a medium low to low heat. And then after a few hours, you'll see here it's quite reduced, really nice rich color. Uh, it's quite caramelized, and uh, we're going to burmix this. Now, there are several ways you can do this. Um, we have uh, one of these stick blenders, really super useful to use the stick blender. If you don't have one of these, you can do this in uh, a blender or a food processor. You just have to make sure that it's well covered because this is extremely hot. Um, so if you're putting it in the blender, make sure you've got a good lid on the blender. Make sure that uh, your, um, your food processor has a good seal on it. You don't want this splashing all over the place. And because it's uh, a tomato sauce, it does tend to get a little splashy. Um, but we like to burn mix it at the end because uh, if you if you blend it or burr mix it really early, it sort of splatters a lot more during the cooking. So we're just going to blend it all at the end here, make sure it's nice and... Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but we do want it uh, nice and mixed up here. There we go. So that's the end of our sauce. Now we're going to use this in a uh, pasta bake today with this beautiful uh, ground beef, some mushrooms. We have a zucchini here. Uh, a little bit more garlic, uh, one of our dried hot peppers, and a little bit more uh, oregano there. So we're going to get, uh, actually this is a little bit of bacon grease in our pan to start with, but uh, again you can use any kind of oil you want, or no oil if you're using uh, a pretty high fat uh, ground beef. We just want to make sure that nothing's sticking right now. And we're just going to get that beef in there right now. A little bit of garlic to start. Want to make sure that we're uh, waking up the uh, aromas in that garlic and uh, hot pepper first. Good salting on the beef. Make sure that's uh, well seasoned. Nice little coating of black pepper on there. And you can do this while your garlic and uh, and hot peppers are sweating a little bit in the pan. And into the pan it goes. Gonna get a nice sizzle right off the bat. And you want to get uh, some good contact with the the heat down there. Now, as I said, we're uh, we're not going to use all of the sauce in this. So the rest of the sauce we're going to use in some future product, uh, some future projects. So keep an eye out for that. This sauce can uh, hold in the fridge for quite some time. All right, let's get our spices in there as well. And we're gonna start breaking up that beef and let it nice uh, get a nice sear on the bottom. Get it mixed up with that garlic. Get the spices, the salt and pepper all mixed in there. Now this is gonna render quite a bit of fat. This is a great time if you want, you can control your um, the, the grease in this dish. If you, if you really need to, um, but please remember, we are going to be moving on to some, uh, mushrooms a little bit later and they will really brown nicely in that, in that, uh, in that grease. So here we go. The beef is all nicely cooked now. It's, uh, it's cooked through, but not seared yet. Not really. We don't have that nice brown caramel on it yet, but what we're going to start with now, we're going to just separate a little bit from that grease and get the mushrooms done on one side here. So we've got all the beef to one side. We've just quartered these mushrooms. They don't need to be particularly small. Uh, they're going to cook down and get nice and soft. Uh, and then once they're in the pasta bake, they're also going to uh, soften even a little bit more. So we've got all those mushrooms in the pan. Make sure they've got some good contact with the heat down at the bottom there. A little dash of salt. A little bit of cracked black pepper. And we're just gonna let that uh, just let that cook down for a little while. You see a nice little sizzle going on there. We're just gonna keep that going for a little while now. So here we go. The mushrooms have all cooked down nicely. We've mixed that in with the beef. And once, uh, now you can really see a good sear on the beef. We're really browning it nicely now. Really good, rich uh, caramelization on the outside of that beef. And uh, now we're going to add the zucchini. 
So just like the mushrooms, they don't have to be particularly small slices. We basically cut it into uh, quarter rounds. And uh, these are also going to get nice and soft. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. Now, of course, all of these you're going to do to your personal tastes. And uh, just let that cook down in the pan a little bit until they get nice and soft, cooked all the way through, a little bit of sear. You can see it on the mushrooms and the beef there. So here we go. Some nice sear on that zucchini. Beautiful color on the beef. Let's get it all mixed together here. Make sure it's all well, well combined. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of ladles of, um, of our nice tomato sauce there that we've just burr mixed. We're just going to mix it in, turn this into uh, something resembling a bolognese sauce. So just get that all nicely combined. We've got the beautiful tomato sauce in there with those great caramelized mushrooms and zucchini, that nice dark browned beef. And just get that all nicely combined. Now this is going to make the uh, the filling for our pasta bake at the end here. And we're going to take this off the heat. Uh, everything in there is pretty hot. And meanwhile, we're going to uh, we're going to get our pasta going. So give your water a good stir. We've got about uh, two cups of macaroni there. You can use whatever pasta you like for this. Fusilli is fine. Any of the short uh, short pastas. And uh, here we go. You want to uh, undercook your pasta. You want it to be pretty al dente because it is going to take some of the moisture out of the uh, various sauces and everything um, once the uh, the casserole, the pasta bake goes into the oven. So, uh, yeah, if it's just a little underdone, that's great. So here we've got a little bit of uh, mozzarella cheese. Probably got about two-thirds of a pound here. We're just going to add about a third of it to the uh, to our beef and tomato sauce here. And the rest of it, of course, is going to go on top. We'll show you that in, a little mo in uh, just a moment here. So get the cheese in the pot, get it well combined. As you can see, we've taken this off the heat so it's not melting immediately. And then we're going to add our pasta as well and get that well combined in there as well. We're going to get that nice and mixed in. Just a gentle little stir. Get the pasta well combined with the sauce. Oh, it looks fantastic. I can eat that right now. But we're going to go a little further with this. So once you've got that nice and combined, we're going to take that over and uh, we're going to put it in our greased and breadcrumb lined casserole dish here. I apologize for the lighting here. It's uh, our kitchen isn't exactly perfectly laid out for this, but uh, here we're just going to get the uh, the mixture evenly spread around in there in our casserole dish here. You can see all those nice chunks of zucchini, nice mushrooms in there, our tomato beef sauce. There's some cheese in there as well. And uh, we're just trying to get that as even as we possibly can. So that it'll, it will bake evenly once it's in the oven. And there we go. All that's left now is to take the rest of our cheese. We're just going to give the, uh, the top a nice covering with the cheese. Nice even coating of uh, mozzarella. You could use uh, any other kind of cheese you like for this as well. Um, lots of other alterations you can make to this. We've actually tried um, adding a couple of little chopped walnuts on top of the cheese. Um, you can spice it up. 
anything you like. This is a really simple recipe to, to make your own changes to. Be bold. Do what you like. Try some different things. So here we go. This is going to go into the oven. So this is our uh, preheated oven. And uh, that is at 350. And we're going to bake that for about, <clears throat> about half an hour. And uh, here it is after it's uh, all done. Now if you feel like the cheese isn't quite done enough on top, then by all means, stick it under the broiler for five minutes. But this is about uh, about exactly where we want it. So here you can see it's a little bit like a, like a lasagna almost. I'm just gonna serve that with a little bit of kale salad there. And there you have it, that's our beautiful tomato sauce all the way through to a pasta bake with uh, beef macaroni with zucchini and mushrooms and uh, simple as pie. So uh, please remember to like and subscribe. If you have any recipes you'd like to see us try on our channel, then please let us know in the comments below and remember to love your food.